My name is Neil Jackson, and this is the Reading Week 2 assignment for Physics 2211, Section M. So this week talked a lot about forces and how they relate to motion, specifically how a change in velocity results in motion. So the first thing the video started talking about were the fact that forces are the types of interactions that cause motion, all right? And we also talked about how a force is a vector. And, you know, like all vectors, forces have a magnitude, and that magnitude is expressed as how strong or how powerful this force is. And then they have a direction, which is usually what direction is the force going in. Pretty self explainable So the videos talked a lot about interactions where the net force is zero so there's it's a constant velocity it's a straight line or a linear function and when the net force is zero that means that the sum of all the forces on a given system is equal to zero so if i have a force going this way and a force going this way and they're of equal magnitude and opposite direction my hands aren't going to be moving at all they're, they're going to be one's going to be pulling this way one's going to be pulling that way but the hands will not separate and it really won't move. So we eventually wound up deriving an equation that told us delta V with the vector, you know, V vector, divided by delta T is equal to the net force divided by the mass. That's Newton's second law and it really helps us describe motion as a whole and Newton's second law enables us to predict the future of motion and predict future outcomes of what is going to happen. And it allows us to predict the future of motion from on the tiniest scale of an atom to the giant scale of the universe. We can predict most any types of motion through Newton's law, Newton's second law and other scientific principles. So that's pretty cool. So we wound up saying that, yeah, the videos also showed us how to start deriving some of the kinematic equations. They weren't like true, they didn't call them the kinematic equations, but we're, we're starting to get there. So we wound up deriving that the final velocity is equal to F net divided by N divided by M times delta t plus the initial vol velocity. And you know, that's just taking Newton's second law and doing some fancy math to get the kinematic equations. And that part of the videos, when we were deriving the kinematic equations, we took this really kind of basic, almost not intuitive, but this really basic law of science. And we were able to say, you know what, based off of Newton's second law, we can find, we can make these equations which are also fact and they help us predict the future i found that extremely interesting and as a mechanical engineer someone who likes to like solve problems kind of solve puzzles make solutions to complex issues i've always liked being able to derive equations and i've always enjoyed the process of making new equations out of simpler ones. So that, that part of the video was really, really interesting to me. And I think that curiosity will help me as my, as in my mechanical engineering career. Um, also in the videos we talked, like the last video talked about spring forces and things like that. Some of that got a little confusing, but it wasn't too bad. The most confusing part of the whole video probably came down to the bare bones of, hey, this is how you code, purely because I've never code, coded before, but I'm excited and ready to learn that. And then the other confusing part was when it started talking about the the weight of a system and the, the difference between weight and mass. I'll do some more research on that, but it doesn't seem too hard. I just need to think about it a little harder. But yeah, that's that. Thank you for watching.